Good morning YouTube, welcome back to the African Allure Outdoors. I trust you guys are all having a fantastic week. Um, today I want to discuss with you penetration on broadheads. Um, so this video is going to include some pass-throughs. Uh, as you've seen by the title, it's called Killing Dirt. I've always been a firm believer that one should try and get a complete pass-through when hunting with a bow. The reason for that is that you have two holes. It uh, allows for better bleeding out to the animals, more ethical and quick kill in most circumstances if the shot is placed right of course. Obviously all this stuff is important but what the most critical factor is is shot placement. So just about any any broadhead can do the job, any arrow can do the job but why not make it more efficient than what others can do. So we're going to click in here to some pass-throughs that I've had over the last couple of months. So we'll see you just after this. Okay, so welcome back after that short view of some past threes. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll put a few more later on. I don't have much because I only really started with YouTube this year. And uh, the reverse angle thing is something that I've always wanted to pursue because it's always nice to see what happens on the other side. So I hope you guys really enjoy those reverse angles. I do have some cheat sheets with me today because I've got a lot to discuss with you today and uh, this video is all about Dr. Ed Ashby and the, the wonderful work he's done on studying penetration of arrows and how to improve penetration of arrows. I'm going to be putting a whole herd of links down in the description below um, so you're welcome to go and check those out but basically to cut a long story short Dr. Ed Ashby was a professional hunter in Zimbabwe and uh, he moved to Natal and he was one of the fathers of bow hunting in South Africa that actually got bow hunting legalized here by proving to the government at the time that um, bows can actually be effective and he did a whole lot of studies on uh, various hard boned animals um, most of his test subjects were done on Asian buffalo but you know a big heavy boned animal is the same the world over. Yeah, their hide might dif differ a bit and their bones might be a little bit different, but penetration is penetration. As long as you get the arrow in there where it needs to go, then that's the most important thing. So, where I'm going to start with this talk today is I'm going to start with um, the longbow guys. Uh, you know, the guys, those of us that are compound bow hunters, we can take a feather out of the longbows guys hats because those guys I have a great amount of respect for them and uh, here are the reasons that I have with a longbow it's basically very simple there's no sights um, whereas the compound bow has complex sights um, you know there's a lot of mechanics around it and of course it's just all about efficiency and producing power or converting power into efficiency 
or maximizing efficiency. You know what? I, you know where I'm going with that. Uh, long bows are slow, whereas we tend to find that compound bows tend to be very fast, and uh, that comes with its own challenges. Um, because we tend to find those of us that hunt professionally with guests tend to find that the longbow guys need to get a lot closer than what the compound guys do and uh, it also has an adverse effect as well because a lot of the compound guys think that they can maybe take shots that are maybe not so ethical or so correct would be the right word so you know it's kind of just finding a balance there um, the longbow guys tend to use solid arrows, you know, especially the traditional guys, they will use wood, wood, wooden arrows. Um, they use two bladers, obviously this is something that's come over many centuries of use. Um, but all these f factors mitigate towards using heavier arrows. Um, whereas if you take the compound hunters, I'm one of them, I started there myself as well, we are off to speed. We think that by getting a faster arrow, we're going to uh, get to the animal quicker, we're going to have better penetration, and there are factors around that, and we'll discuss that as this video goes on. Um, but ultimately, heavy arrows penetrate just a lot better than what light arrows d do. Uh, you sacrifice trajectory when you go heavy, but one has got to try and find a balance between the two, you don't need to go ultra heavy, but uh, you know I I would rather go heavy than what I would chase speed. But it's personal. Personally, this year, if things hadn't turned out the way they had turned out, I would have started out with traditional archery this year because it's something that I'm very keen to get into. I don't really know where to start, but uh, I've started the discussion with a couple of guys both overseas and locally. Um, yeah, but this year just hasn't turned out the way that it is. I think the other big key factor is, is that um, people don't spend enough time practicing um, with a compound bow. And that's another thing where I really take my hat off to the traditional guys, is they really put in the effort. They put in the effort to get those arrows to shoot straight. You must remember most of them are, are shooting on instinct. Or, or reflex shooting, you know, they, they, they literally, they're not really aiming per se. Um, whereas with a compound bow, you can put down a compound bow for two or three weeks and you can pick it up. And your form might not be so great, um, but you can still put arrows into a butt. Do that with a reflex or a, or a, or a stick bow or a traditional bow and, uh, you know, you're kind of not as hot as you think you are. But saying all that, you know, to me, bow hunting has always been a bit like golf. And there's that sort of learning curve that one needs to get over. And, uh, yeah, I think compound bows make that learning curve just a little bit easier for newcomers in. And, and maybe those guys develop at a later stage. Unless you're born into it, of course. You know, if you watch some of these guys that make bows on, on Facebook, um, the stick bows, I'm going to reference Clay Hayes, man, I would love to have one of his bows, I would love to have his ability to, to be able to produce such beautiful traditional stick bows, and to be able to shoot them like he does. Um, I think the other thing as well with, with, with traditional bows is the simplicity in them, in that there's almost no moving parts. Whereas with compound bows, we've got lots of moving parts. We've got drop-away rests. We've got uh, sights that can sometimes move, uh, pins that move. You know, we have peeps that move. We have cams that roll over. We have timing to worry about, cables, cable guards. So it's, it's, it's a very complex, complex thing. All right. So now we're going to get into the 12 factors of better arrow penetration. And this is all based on Dr. Ed Ashby's stuff. I'm going to read these factors to you, or I'm going to go through these factors with you out of importance, as they occur in importance. So we'll be starting right at the top, the most critical factors of importance, and we'll be working down the list. Um, again, look down in the description below, you'll find all that. Remember, if you like my channel, please like and subscribe to it and, and follow us. And I hope to bring you some more hunting action. Um, so, the number one on Dr. Ed Ashby's list is structural integrity. 
you know, we can have an arrow with a good broadhead, everything, but if it's structurally going to explode when it hits an animal, then it's not going to do anything. It's not going to penetrate. It's not going to do the job that it wants to do. I use a 250 spine, and I'm going to be dropping down to 200, so you can see there's very little stretch in these. Um, the other key factor is, and I'm going to reference uh, the ranch ferry, or Troy Fowler. I'm going to put his link down in the description there, because he does some awesome videos on, on the building of heavy arrows and high FOC arrows. But arrow flight is important. It is a critical, critical factor. You know, you don't want an arrow that's flying at 90 degrees to the target. It's just not going to penetrate right. You want an arrow that's going to go in or it's going to hit its target perfectly and uh, the tail is going to follow the head. So that is critical. Arrow flight is a critical, critical factor. We as archers, particularly compound archers, we don't spend enough time working on our arrows, tuning our broadheads, tuning our arrow shafts, knock tuning, playing with the fletchers, adjusting. We, d we don't do that. We're inclined to just pick up a bow. And again, I'm not saying this about everyone. There are exceptions to the rule. I was definitely in that class where I just put an arrow in and just flung it down range and they, I just hoped for the best. And then when I started doing research on the internet, then I started finding stuff and I started playing with stuff. And I spent a lot of time playing with stuff. What works for some people doesn't work for others. You know, a lot of guys have said to me, why do I use such big fletchings on my, on my broadheads? And, uh, or on, on my broadheads, on my arrows. But the reason is, is that they just fly better for me. So why change something that's working for you? You know, I shoot 760 grain arrows. I have a very, very low FOC compared to what other guys does. But the reason for that is that I have an exceptionally long draw length. I have a 32 inch draw length. And when you're shooting 250 spines or 200 spines, then you start talking about arrows that have got 13, 14, 15, 16 grains per inch. So when you start looking at that, then you start saying to yourself, okay, but your arrow weight's going to go up. This is a post video production of uh, a further thought to perfecting arrow flight or getting arrow flight right. This is related to cars and the towing of trailers. In this short clip that you'll see, you'll see what the difference makes of putting weight at the back of the trailer versus the front of the trailer. And it's exactly the same with arrow flight. If your weight is at the front, you are pulling the arrow from the front. When you pull the arrow from the front, you're going to pull it through a lot better than trying to steer the arrow from the back. And I just thought that this is a great video just to explain to you how weight at the front of the arrow actually assists you in creating perfect arrow flight. And uh, so I hope you enjoy this. The other thing that I will also say to you is uh, I'm going to link in the description down below. Um, there's a channel that I follow on YouTube called The Hunting Public. And they did a very good video with the Ranch Ferry about bear, bear shaft tuning and playing with knocks and stuff. And it's really incredible in that video to see how bear shafts actually fly sideways. And just by correcting a few simple things, they get perfect arrow flight with a bare shaft out of a compound bow. Anyway, enjoy the rest of the video. Thanks for watching. Um, the next, number three on the list is arrow FOC. So arrow FOC is basically the front of center mass. How much weight have you got up front? So I'm going to put a link to gold tips calculator down below. You can go and check that out. But basically what you want to do is you want to take a fixed object. So in this case, I'm using my finger here. And you want to find its balance point. All right. So the arrow balances at approximately that. Then what you would do is you would measure from the front of the arrow to your balance point. Um, and then you would measure from the front of the arrow right up to your knock. And uh, you'd put that into the calculator and it'll give you a percentage of FOC. 
Now, the ideal FOC or the the best FOC for penetration would be between 19 and 30 percent. So that is for optimal penetration, 19 to 30 percent. And then if you want to go overboard, well, not overboard, let's just say if you want to really make sure that you're going to penetrate through anything, the guys that are hunting Cape Buffalo, Elephant, Asiatic Buffalo, Water Buffalo, Bantang, Domestic Cattle, those those guys they they or, or brumbies as they're called in the in in Australia, then you want to look at arrow um, FOC of thirty percent plus, and uh, your trajectory is going to be quite insane, um, but obviously you're going to be taking close shots shots with that. You know I think the big thing to remember is is that compound arrows I mean compound arrows compound bows. Um, are now so efficient that we're getting better speeds and you can take a bow that's very fast and you can load it up with a heavy arrow and all it means is that you're just going to get a faster moving heavy arrow so why not play with that you know the thing is is that the speed of bows is so far off the speed of sound that the difference between 300 feet per second and 200 feet per second at 30 yards or 20 yards whatever you're hitting is point 2.3 of a second you know of 0.2 or 0.3 of a second is it really going to make that that di much difference can your animal move that much in 0.2 or 0.3 of a second and the answer is no the sound that they're moving away from is the sound of the bow um, and we see this all the time now when you go to heavier arrow setups your bow becomes quieter so the chances are the animal reacting to your bow is qu quite often a lot less. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is mechanical broadheads. No, oh, mechanical broadheads. Mechanical advantage. All right, so the mechanical advantage on a broadhead is basically what Dr. Ed Ashby states is the longer the broadhead, the better that it penetrates. It's got more surface to cut and, and work through. So you get very short stubby broadheads and there's nothing wrong with shooting them. Those work great on small animals um, and unfortunately I don't have any tough heads here at the moment but uh, Dr. Ed Ashby says that the ideal broadhead has a 1 in 3 uh, uh, scale ratios. So if your broadhead is 3 inches long then it has a cut in one inch wide, then you're at the optimal for, in terms of getting the ultimate penetration. So that's mechanical advantage, is basically having a long, sharp, pointed broadhead, rather than a short, stubby broadhead. Okay, folks, uh, this 12 factors to Dr. Ed Ashby's improving your penetration. Um, I've been going through the editing of the video now and it's just getting a little bit too long so I'm going to split this into two videos so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, please stay tuned for the next one of the series of killing dirt and uh, I hope it helps some of you be safe remember to like and subscribe check out the links below and we'll see you on the next one cheers